Hi, this is Jane Philpot at Cooking for Health. Welcome to my digital home. My mission is to inspire you to take responsibility for your own health so you can live with joy and vitality. My passion is providing you with knowledge, skills and encouragement so you can make this happen. Even simple changes to what we eat, drink and think can make huge differences to how we feel. I believe in eating plants, not pills. A whole food, plant-based diet. I'll explain what I mean by that a bit later, but first I want to tell you my story. At the moment I'm sitting on a wall outside our house. Uh, behind me is the view that I look out of on, uh, from my kitchen window. It's a very peaceful place, very beautiful place, very close to nature. I live here with my husband Paul and our two children and our two dogs which are Springer Spaniels. But we haven't always lived here. Uh, Twelve years ago I was head of bioscience research for Syngenta which is one of the world's largest agribusinesses with annual sales of over 14 billion dollars. I was responsible for large numbers of scientists and multi-million dollar projects and, and departments. I travelled all over the world, um, I worked routinely 60 to 80 hour weeks and I loved my job, it was what I was trained to do. I'd been there for 14 years after completing two master's degrees and a PhD and I was proud of the research that we uh, conducted which is at the cutting edge of, of science and um, such an important cause as well to produce enough food to feed the growing world population. But the birth of our two children, on top of this, this big role, um, just left me exhausted. I couldn't sleep and I started developing all these weird neurological symptoms, um, twitches and um, joint pains and um, other kinds of weird things. And um, eventually one morning I woke up and my entire right side was numb, completely dead, all down one side. Um, I tumbled out of bed in a panic and fortunately the feeling came back but uh, I was left with pins and needles which went on for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, I kept ignoring it and eventually after about 10 weeks I thought I'd better go and see the doctor. She uh, examined me and she said she didn't really know what it was but she wanted to rule out multiple sclerosis. She said that she would refer me for an MRI scan and uh, an appointment with a consultant neurologist. And there was me thinking, multiple sclerosis, are you serious? If I've got that, I'm doomed because medical uh, Western medicine has no cure. What am I going to do? How am I going to look after our children who were tiny? And how am, I going to, how am I going to work? I was just in an absolute blind panic. And I had to wait 18 weeks for that MRI scan. And uh, in that time, I decided to do what I felt familiar with, which was go to the scientific literature and um, route through the, the, the big journals, the medical journals and scientific journals to see what I could find about multiple sclerosis. Now, many of the papers just depressed me even further, but there were some that just blew my mind away. I came across some research by um, Professor Roy Swank, MD, um, a neurologist and emeritus professor at um, University of Oregon Medical School and he had been following some patients for over 34 years. He'd put them on um, a low saturated fat, whole plant food diet. And after 34 years, um, those who had stuck to the diet hadn't seen any worsening of their symptoms. In fact, they really felt fine. Um, compared with those who hadn't, who, who continued to deteriorate and some of them even died. I was just absolutely amazed, so I decided to carry on looking at the scientific literature to see what else I could find about diet and chronic disease. I looked in some of the major journals, Nature, Science, um, the British Medical Journal, The Lancet, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, and I found all kinds of papers that I just thought were astonishing. I discovered that you can actually reverse type 2 diabetes by changing what you eat. Um, so that to the extent that people can actually come off their medications. I found that you can unblock coronary arteries, um, get blood flowing again and reverse heart disease. I found that there is growing evidence that um, feeding infants cow's milk can be responsible for type 1 diabetes. I found that 
arthritis, um, particularly rheumatoid arthritis, has a strong link to diet. I found that kidney stones and other kinds of kidney disease can be related to overconsumption of protein. And then there was a massive literature on cancer. Um, cancer, breast cancer levels in women are associated with lifetime um, levels of oestrogen and oestrogen levels are, are linked to the kind of food that we eat. Um, some societies in the world, levels of breast cancer, incidence of breast cancer is, is practically nothing. In other places, it's 20 times higher. I also found that um, antioxidants and phytochemicals that are in um, plants can protect the body from cancer, um, diabetes, heart disease, and all manner of other ailments. I was blown away. I'd heard the messages that you can prevent chronic disease with diet, but I had no idea that it's possible to reverse it. And that idea to me was absolutely radical. Fortunately, it turned out that I didn't have multiple sclerosis, but I, by then I was completely hooked on the whole subject of nutrition and health. I quit my job in, in the corporate world and we moved to the countryside to an 18th century cottage and um, this is where I began studying nutrition in earnest. Shortly afterwards, I spent two years training in whole food plant-based cookery with Muncie Bradford, who's an expert in Eastern medical approaches to diet, um, nutrition and health. This was the beginning of a long journey back to health and well-being, which encompassed Western medicine, Eastern medical approaches, um, nutrition and yoga. Then, early in 2006, a book was published which further changed my life. It's called The China Study by Professor T. Colin Campbell. Professor Campbell is now in his 80s, but for many years he was head of nutrition at the University of Cornell in the United States. He was actually raised on a dairy farm in the Midwest and originally went to university to learn how to improve animal production. But he got involved in a project in the Philippines studying the causes of liver cancer in children and that was to change the course of his research and the course of his life. He ended up giving up eating meat and dairy products and devoting his whole career to the study of the effect of diet on cancer and he was particularly interested in the effect of protein on cancer. In this book, The China Study, Colin Campbell publishes or presents data um, on, from about 750 scientific papers on the effect of chronic disease, um, diet on chronic disease and it absolutely blew my mind. Also, um, it talks about the China study, which was a massive epidemiological study conducted by the University of Cornell, Oxford University, and the Chinese Academy of Preventive Medicine. Two years later, another book was published. Um, this one is called um, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, and it's by a medical doctor, Coldwell Esselstyn, MD. Now, Dr. Esselstyn um, is a general surgeon and he worked for many years at the Cleveland Clinic in Ohio. He specialised in um, thyroid, gastrointestinal and breast surgery, but he'd always been interested in, in vascular diseases and had trained in that as well. Um, he became quite disillusioned with his work because he felt that he was constantly seeing people but not making them better and he started reading the medical literature on epidemiology which is the study of the pattern of diseases and he found for example that incidence of breast cancer was 20 times higher in American women compared with women in Kenya. He also found um, big differences in, in Japan compared with the rest of the world. In the 1950s in Japan, breast cancer was virtually unheard of, but as soon as Japanese women started migrating to America and adopting the diet and lifestyle habits of Americans, within one generation they had the same risk factor for cancer, for breast cancer, as Americans. And in the literature it tells the same story um, about prostate, ovarian cancer, colon cancer, obesity and diabetes. So Dr. Esselstyn, back in um, the United States, went along to see his colleagues in cardiology and managed to sign up um, about 
um, I'm not sure, 26 um, patients or something like that. And he was uh, very strict with them and persuaded them to change to a plant-based diet and has been monitoring them ever since. And uh, five of the people that were, he took on had been told they only had a year to live. And all 17 of the people who managed to stay on the diet for, for years and years and years never had another cardiac event, whilst the people who didn't comply with the diet did have cardiac events and some of them died. Dr. Esselstyn says that heart disease is a toothless paper tiger that need never exist. He says it's a foodborne disease. I also came across the writings and teachings of John McDougall MD, Dean Ornish MD, Neil Bernard MD. All I could think about was teaching others about the things I'd learned about the remarkable effects of nutrition on, on health and well-being. So I began to teach courses just um, in our local village hall and various people came along. My first seven students were so encouraging and supportive and I'll be eternally grateful to them. So what does a whole food plant-based diet actually mean? Well it means what it says on the can really, um, whole unprocessed food as nature intended. It means whole grains like brown rice, quinoa, buckwheat, millet. It means um, all manner of vegetables, fruits, multicoloured, green, orange, yellow, red, root vegetables, round vegetables, green leafy vegetables. It means vegetarian proteins like pulses, beans, tempeh, tofu, nuts and seeds, um, sea vegetables which are very rich in minerals, and fermented foods like miso and sauerkraut which are very good for the digestion. It's not a raw food diet as such, though it does contain raw food. It's not a vegan diet per se, though um, no animal products are consumed. Um, vegan food can actually be quite unhealthy. It can contain quite a lot of sugar and saturated fat. So just the fact that it's vegan doesn't necessarily mean it's good for you. That the really important thing is to have whole food, whole food with all of the nutrients remaining in it that the body needs to function effectively. Now, I realise that there's no shortage of information on nutrition out there. Practically every week there's another diet book, another New York Times bestseller, and there really ought to be enough information for everybody, but frankly, if you're anything like me, you're completely confused by it all. Even the experts don't seem to be able to agree with each other. Um, one minute saturated fat is really bad for you, the next minute papers are being published saying it's okay, then carbohydrates are the villains. What about olive oil? Should you eat olive oil? What about fish? Have they got mercury in them? What about the fish oils? Don't they stop you from getting dementia? It's just so confusing. Um, and then on top of that, you've got all sorts of environmental issues as well. Should you eat GM food or are GM crops going to save the planet? Um, what about the paleo diet? Shouldn't we all be living like our cavemen ancestors? Or is it just plant-based? Perhaps sugar is the, the real big evil. Round and round and round you go, and it's just very, very confusing. I spend a lot of time sifting through the scientific literature, trying to find answers to questions like this, because often I'm as confused as anybody else. I also um, draw on my knowledge of Eastern approaches to um, nutrition and health, um, particularly Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine and yoga teachings, yogic teachings which contain great wisdom. And I try to put it all together in ways that it's easy for you to implement and follow, um, practical tools and practical approaches. I create videos and I'm creating courses and ebooks. You can keep up to date with what I'm up to by signing up for my newsletter. There's a box on the front page of my website. And also you can follow me on social media, on Facebook, Cooking for Health, and on Twitter, at Jane K. Philpott. I'm also on LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Instagram. Remember, every mouthful of whole plant-based food that you eat, you're protecting your body from chronic diseases like diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. Eat plants, not pills. <laughs>